I had awakened the world's only success level contract talent, yet the academy still labeled me as a useless waste. My ability to forge contracts with any creature and control their body and soul seemed unbeatable, but it came with a severe limitation. The creature had to willingly swallow the contract gem with no trace of soul rejection allowed. But who would willingly surrender their life to someone else? Seeing me lost in despair, my childhood friend Su Jingyao tried to comfort me. Don't give up so soon. The world is vast, surely there are creatures out there willing to let you control them. I gave her a faint smile, thinking how easy it was to say. Who would agree to such a fate? Except, what if I did it to myself? An idea struck me, and before I could second guess it, I swallowed the contract gem. If I could control myself perfectly, wouldn't that grant me absolute mastery over my body? As the gem settled in, I noticed subtle changes, wisps of green gas that only I could see floating in the air. Su Jingyao, noticing my reaction, asked if I was all right. I smiled, shaking my head. Don't worry, I'm fine. Relieved, she turned and walked toward the dormitory, excited for her first patrol duty tomorrow, a lifelong dream of hers to protect her home. I, on the other hand, was deemed useless and assigned to be a farmer. As she left, I felt a pang of reluctance. The thought of hugging her crossed my mind, and suddenly, without conscious effort, my body moved on its own and embraced her tightly. Startled, Su Jingyao shyly pushed me away, telling me to take care before hurrying back to the dormitory. I stood there, lost in thought. Had I just ordered my own body to move subconsciously? I needed to test the limits of this newfound control. After a series of experiments, I confirmed that I could make my body do nearly anything, as long as it remained within the bounds of human capability. I couldn't fly or transform into another species, but I could replicate movements I had never practiced, purely from memory. With the right physical conditioning, I could master any martial art. The key to growing stronger was to keep enhancing my physical fitness. That night, I tested another theory. Before going to sleep, I ordered my body to wake up at 4 a.m. and run. Even as my consciousness slept, my body obeyed. At 6 a.m., I woke up to find myself sitting in the cafeteria, a smile creeping onto my lips. My body had followed my orders perfectly, even when I was unconscious. No one seemed to notice anything unusual, though. But then, I noticed a commotion nearby. Lu Xiu, the beauty of the next class, had arrived. She was admired by both men and women alike and her presence always caused a stir. Curious, I turned to look, and my heart skipped a beat. Lu Xiu had always been a slender, beautiful girl, but what stood before me was a massive fox, standing upright at two meters tall, with a girl's skin stretched over its forehead. To my shock, everyone around her still gazed at her with admiration, as if nothing was amiss. Good morning, Zheng Ping, the giant fox greeted me in a husky voice. I commanded myself to stay calm and replied, Good morning, Lu Xiu. I had a nightmare last night, so I didn't sleep well. I excused myself and left the cafeteria, my mind racing. Why were there mutated beasts at school, and why did no one else seem to notice? I rushed to report this to the teachers, but when I arrived at the faculty room, I saw one of the teachers outside the door, it was another fox wearing human skin. Realizing the teachers were compromised too, I walked past without seeking help. These beasts had been hiding in plain sight for who knows how long, and until now, like my classmates, I hadn't realized Lu Xiu and the teacher were not human. This change must have come from the contract gem I swallowed yesterday. What if I ate another one? Without hesitation, I took out a second gem and swallowed it. This time, a wave of clarity washed over me as my vision brightened. I looked down at the ground and saw a pool of illusory blood where there had been nothing before. Then, 
a prompt sound echoed in my mind identification successful before my eyes a terrifying scene unfolded the giant fox wearing human skin was devouring someone's head was this the awakening of an appraisal technique i examined my palm in confusion and invoked the identification summoning beast jung ping master jung ping race human potential 3 stars life span 89 years contract gem level 1 the appraisal technique revealed that if a target voluntarily accepted a contract gem their life soul and consciousness would fall under the summoner's control however they would also receive the summoner's potential luck as a blessing the technique provided absolute order summon beasts had to obey no matter what with this new talent I realized that I had become my own summoner, able to control my body and mind without external interference. This made me immune to illusions and allowed me to see the true form of the mutated beasts around me. These foxes were highly intelligent and specialized in cognitive distortion, making people perceive their monstrous actions as normal. I decided to investigate further and left the school at noon under the pretense of feeling unwell. My destination was the patrol team's headquarters where Su Jingyao had reported earlier that day. Along the way, I encountered several more natural foxes mingling with the public without arousing suspicion. When I reached the headquarters, I approached the consultation desk. The fox behind the counter asked who I was looking for and I replied, "Su Jingyao." She reported here today. Moments later, Su Jingyao appeared. but i could see through her human skin to the fox underneath masking my shock i smiled and asked how she was adjusting everything's fine she replied cheerfully the team is great and they're taking good care of me i'll become stronger and avenge my parents we are still short on people do you want me to recommend you for the team i declined knowing that the patrol team was compromised as i left anger bubbled inside me the patrol team supposedly the strongest force in pearl city had been wiped out and su jingyao had fallen on her first day these foxes had infiltrated not just the school but the entire city turning its residents into their captive livestock later that night i discovered a dark silver ring on the playground while running the ring's intricate design caught my eye and after several failed attempts i finally identified it as an assassination ring the ring granted its wearer the ability to be subconsciously ignored by others though advanced awakened individuals were immune as i examined the ring a fox's hoarse voice called out in the distance i quickly hid using the night crawler ability i had gained earlier that week the fox sniffed around searching for something but ultimately found nothing satisfied it left and i breathed a sigh of relief the ring made me realize that power wasn't limited to my own abilities there were magical items in pearl city with unique properties often crafted by skilled blacksmiths i decided to investigate further but just as i made this decision a familiar voice echoed in my mind su jingyao's voice warning me of danger Moments later, Lu Xiu, or rather the fox in her skin, entered my dormitory, circling around before stopping to stare directly at me. The dormitory was silent, broken only by the sound of my steady breathing. Lu Xiu's fox-like narrow eyes slightly narrowed as he raised a claw toward my head, only to stop at the last moment, showing no emotion. He knew that if this worthless person slipped away, they'd likely fight for their life. Not sensing any unusual presence, Lu Xiu hesitated, then slowly withdrew his claw. A Tian Chengu behind him questioned, "Your Highness, why not kill him? He runs every morning, but didn't today. Something feels off." Lu Xiu coldly shook his head, "Not him. Don't waste food." Realizing his overstep, the Tian Chengu immediately bowed, his tail hanging low in submission. Half an hour later, I was fast asleep in the dormitory, but I suddenly opened my eyes, 
confirming that the Tian Chengu had left. My heart finally settled. That was close, almost too close. I had forgotten about my daily morning run, but fortunately, I managed to force myself into a deep sleep, leaving no room for suspicion. I thought I heard Su Jingyao's voice earlier. Was it just an illusion? I went to the cafeteria as usual. Upon arrival, I overheard students talking about the death of the Black Death Star, a notorious assassin of Pearl City, capable of killing anyone for the right price, even the city lord. The last city lord had died prematurely due to injuries inflicted by this assassin. Could the Black Death Star be the same person in white who tried to assassinate Luo Xiu last night? If even the top assassin was killed easily, Luo Xiu's strength must be unfathomable. The public display of the body was likely a warning to those opposing Tian Chenggu, signaling them to tread carefully. I knew I needed to find some equipment for self-defense. After class, I headed to a blacksmith shop but noticed it was controlled by Tian Chenggu. I decided to keep searching until I found a quieter shop called Iron Souls. The place had few customers, mostly risk takers, and the owner was human, not a Tian Chenggu. Inside, a young man was trying to sell a thin sword, claiming it was the best. The elderly shopkeeper, a bit senile, was more concerned about his daughter than the sale. The young man, irritated, grabbed the sword to show it off, but it snapped in two. Furious, he tried to attack, boosting about his martial arts skills. Before he could strike, I effortlessly deflected him, identifying his meager strength. As I turned to leave, a woman's voice rang out, challenging him. The young man fled in a panic, and the woman, Kyu Kyung, approached me. She revealed that she was struggling to run the shop while caring for her uncle, who had lost his mind after his daughter disappeared. Seeing my potential, she offered me a job as a blacksmith, including room, board, and training in forging weapons. After some thought, I accepted, thinking the skills could save me money on equipment later. Days passed, and I began learning the trade. Kyu Kyung taught me an unusual method of forging called harmony forging, where materials had to be evenly stirred by hand in the fire. During one session, I accidentally inhaled too much heat, causing a burst of flame that was absorbed into my body. To my surprise, I gained a new ability, Fire Eater, allowing me to store and release fire energy. Kyu Kyung was impressed by the quality of the materials, which could only be achieved at extreme temperatures, and praised my talent. She handed me a newly forged weapon, Beauty Tears, worth a small fortune. Despite the generous gift, she warned me not to let the shop be noticed by Tian Chenggu. I promised to be careful and began patrolling the area at night, using my night walker abilities. While scouting, I discovered a low-level mutated beast disguised as a little girl. Just as I prepared to strike, a cold voice stopped me. A woman with an icy demeanor warned me not to target children and to meet her at the orphanage practice field. Her knowledge of the practice field hinted that she knew me from my orphanage days. As I followed her instructions, I encountered an armored poison-tailed rat, a mutated beast. Despite its tough defenses, I managed to defeat it and leveled up in the process. However, something felt off. As I pondered the situation, a black circle suddenly appeared beneath me, pulling me into a void. When I landed, I was trapped in a gel-like substance, facing a woman in white with an ice mask. She demanded I prove I was human. Desperately, I used my identification ability, finally learning her name was Liu Sishin, a member of the mysterious mop-up team with formidable powers. Realizing she was from the same orphanage as me, I recited an old boxing formula she had taught me as a child. Surprised, she admitted I had passed the test. She then asked about my recent behavior, and I explained that I had consumed the contract stone, becoming a summoner immune to the illusions of mutated beasts. I also revealed that I suspected Tianqing foxes were infiltrating the city, 
disguising themselves as humans. She verified my information with her team and apologized for her suspicion but warned me that the situation was more complicated than I knew. Liu Sishin gave me a jade plaque for emergencies and 10,000 pearl coins as compensation. The next day, as I left the blacksmith's shop, I encountered a girl promoting Beast King boxing. Intrigued, I watched her demonstration, impressed by the martial skills. However, just as I considered learning more, a group of thugs arrived, threatening her for distributing flyers in their territory. Upon hearing this, the girl quickly apologized, Excuse me, I didn't realize I couldn't send it here. She then continued, Why would anyone bother learning such an inferior martial skill as Beast King Fist? You should consider coming to our kingy boxing hall instead. As she spoke, a young man with yellow hair approached, sneering, Isn't this the so-called Lightning Five Kneeling Company? Liu Baogo's face turned red with anger at the insult, but the young man continued, I haven't settled the score with you about the blacksmith shop incident. Today is the perfect time. Exaiwenjida, Exaiwenji ER, get him. As the two strong men moved toward me, the girl quickly stepped in front, shielding me, I won't let you bully him. Taking advantage of the moment, I activated my appraisal technique. Name, Exaiwenjida, Exaiwenji ER. Race, human. Growth value, 1 star. Level, 4 innate talent, body enhancement. Intelligence reduced by 70% in exchange for physical strength. I couldn't help but think, is this really a gift? Curious, I checked the girl's information as well. Name, Wang Jiemin. Race, human. Growth value, 7 stars. Talent, diligence makes up for weakness. Learning ability decreased by 90%, but any skill can be improved through consistent practice. Repeated exercises increase growth rate by 10%. I was surprised, I hadn't expected Wang Jiemin to be a potential powerhouse in the future. For now, her strength was enough to help me, but I decided to take matters into my own hands. This is my fight. I'll handle it myself, I reassured her with a smile. The two men lunged at me, and I quickly entered combat mode, mimicking the Beast King boxing moves Wang Jiemin had just demonstrated. In three swift strikes, they were both down, groaning on the ground. I turned to Wang Jiemin, now, take me to the Beast King boxing gym to sign up. Wang Jiemin snapped out of her shock, you're amazing. You learned it just by watching once? If there's anything you don't understand, let me know. I can help you. I smiled and nodded, thinking to myself, she has the potential to achieve seven stars. In the future, she might even surpass me. I might need her help someday. After signing up at the martial arts hall, I returned to the blacksmith shop. The next day, it was time for class. A strong instructor, probably in his 40s or 50s, walked in. Most awakened in the physical enhancement system were big and muscular, and this instructor was no exception. He had a beard, wolf-like eyes, and visible canine teeth. Attention! 50 laps for bad posture, he barked. I initiated my appraisal technique. Name, Bai D. Race, Human. Growth value, 1 star. Level, 25. Talent, food supplementation, gradually changes physique through diet. Special forms, berserker lion, very strong. From his attributes, he seemed comparable to Liu Sishin. Baidi approached me, you're the kid who taught Kingi Martial Arts Hall a lesson yesterday. Yes, I replied. Show me what you've got. By the challenge, throwing a punch. I had no time to speak, only to dodge. I heard you learn the Beast King Fist just by watching it once. Is that true? Bai D asked, retracting his fist. He chuckled, I didn't believe it at first, but now I do. 
Unfortunately, the person who showed you the moves didn't do it right. I'll correct them for you later. I thanked him with a fist salute and by D turned to the others. Line up to fight me. If you don't meet the standards, it's 500 push-ups plus a 10 km run. Afterward, Wang Jiemin whispered to me, the instructor won't teach me more. Can you help me in private? I agreed, sure. After class, come with me to the blacksmith shop. I'll be your sparring partner. In the following days, I guided Wang Jiemin, breaking down the beast king fist into simpler moves and having her practice each one repeatedly. Beast king fist was indeed a sophisticated technique, but with consistent practice, I felt my own level improving. One day, Sister Kyung returned to the blacksmith shop after being away for a few days. Leaning against the counter, she sighed, it was rough out there. We had to go deep into the northern mountains because there were few mutated beasts around. Finally, we encountered a pack of wolves, all mutated. I asked if she was hurt, and she shook her head. No, we managed to hide with a shovel, and the wolves went after some nearby savages instead. But we got something good out of it. She pulled out a green gem. I appraised the gem and found it to be a rare biological crystal capable of storing wind elemental energy which could be released to create blades and storms. The gem felt cool to the touch and as I held it a faint breeze seemed to emanate from it. I closed my eyes to concentrate on its properties and suddenly I could hear distant voices men and women speaking. My eyes shot open and I immediately used my appraisal on myself. Name Jung Ping. Level four. New talent. Wine whisperer. Randomly hears emotional voices within a ten mile radius, unable to actively control. It was a new talent, similar to the last one I gained. Two hoarse voices interrupted my thoughts. Saturday. Besides Wang Jiemin, there's another man in that store. He's the one who got us in trouble. He looks tasty. Let's eat them for lunch. I'll take that kid and you can have Wang Jiemin. My heart sunk. Looking out the door, I recognized them immediately. It was the Tianqing foxes. We were being hunted. I quickly tried to contact Liu Cixin, but there was no response. The situation was dire. Even with Sister Qiang's help, we couldn't win against two intermediate Tianqing foxes. To protect them, I decided to take Wang Jiemin and escape. But as we tried to leave through the back door, the mutated beasts had already blocked our path. Where do you think you're going? A familiar voice called out. Wang Jiemin looked confused. Mom? Dad? What are you doing here? They're not your parents, I quickly said, trying to hold her back while I checked their information. The Tianqing foxes in your parents' skin. As the mutated beasts approached us like predators, the ground beneath us opened into a black vortex, dark room space. We began to fall, but not before one of them managed to slash my back. We landed safely, but the foxes weren't far behind. There was no escape now. As they pounced, I barely managed to fend them off with a dagger. Just when things seemed hopeless, Liu Cixin arrived. Jiang Ping, get out of the way! With a swift motion, a blue ice blade flew through the air, piercing through the foxes' chests. Liu Cixin slashed at their necks, and both foxes fell to the ground, dead. Wang Jiemin was devastated, collapsing in tears. Mom, Dad, I'm sorry. I should have realized sooner. I explained with a sigh. They weren't your parents. They were killed by the Tianqing foxes, who then took their place. As the human skins peeled off, revealing the grotesque bodies of the mutated beasts, Wang Jiemin was stunned, unable to believe what she saw. I hugged her, trying to comfort her. It's not your fault. You couldn't have known. But you can change the future by becoming stronger and protecting those who are still important to you. She listened. Tears still streaming down her face, and I continued. I lost someone important to me too.
but dwelling on the past won't change anything. We can only move forward and fight to prevent others from suffering the same fate. Just as I finished speaking, a wave of exhaustion hit me, and I collapsed. I had been holding on for so long, but now that the danger had passed, my body finally gave in. Meanwhile, in the city lord's mansion, a gathering of Tianqing foxes was underway. The one who had eaten Lu Xiu sat at the head of the table, his voice dripping with malice, nine of our kin have died this week. It seems humans have found a way to break our illusions. A female fox, wearing the skin of a charming woman, suggested, Your Highness, why don't we just kill them all and take over the city? Another fox, disguised as a fat man, quickly countered, And what will we eat? Grass. The discussion quickly turned into a heated argument until Luo Xiu silenced them with a fierce aura. Quite. Killing all humans isn't practical, and it would be a waste of food. We need to lure them out one by one. What do you suggest, Deputy City Lord? The only human in the room, Huang Zeming, spoke up, Your Highness, we could bring in other races to muddy the waters in Pearl City. Then we focus on eliminating the strongest among the humans. In addition to the patrol team and the investigation team, there's another group that only the city lord knows about. After the king struck the city lord, he was injured. 